Uh, welcome to Kopi Afternoon with Video House. Uh, I'm Chef Deepthi, your host for today. And I'm also the host and chef on one of Video House's very popular cooking shows, Cook Club Eat. Cook Club Eat is more than a cooking show. Uh, not only do we show you how to make healthy, delicious recipes, but we also uh, bring interesting personalities on board who share their uh, inspirational journeys as we cook with them. And today, once again, Video House has put together this really interesting event uh, on healthy plant-based eating with Anya uh, from Living, Veggies by, Living Veggie by Anya. Uh, Anya is a vegan educator and she's been promoting uh, veganism since uh, 2017 under this brand. And uh, she's going to show us three delicious vegan recipes today. And she's going to share a lot of tips on what is a healthy vegan diet. So Anya, before we begin the cooking, let's say hi to all our audience. Hello, hello to everyone. I'm really happy that you joined and appreciate your time. I hope that those three very simple recipes will be part of your regular menu. Are we ready to start? Lovely. Anya, before we begin the cooking, uh, let's share with our audience a little bit about your background and what, uh, were you always a vegan or uh, did you turn vegan uh, and what made, what made you uh, adopt that lifestyle? I'm, I'm vegan for the past uh, for last, uh, five years. I've been vegetarian since I was 11 years old, so that was uh, my, my conscious choice. That's most of my life, and I chose vegan because of health aspects. I never been sick, um, uh, thanks God to that. But I felt a uh, bit of lower energy, and I did not always feel like exercise in the morning. And then I started to read about vegan diet that people had this energy boost. I first started just a few days a week and slowly increase it and I saw a big difference. I started to, uh, to run. I never did any jogging before. I started to have more energy. I needed less sleep. Uh, so I decided that's the, that's the way to go. That was the first step and then it's my sort of uh, desire to share it with everyone. So I, I did some nutritional certification when I got a bit of the science behind the food and I understand how to uh, balance uh, vegan uh, food, uh, how to make it healthy. And I started to conduct uh, cooking classes to teach people that the vegan food is more than a tofu and a grass. And this is such an in thing today, you know, um, even celebrities, so many celebrities are turning vegan and nobody's worried about uh, losing meat. Uh, from their diet anymore. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree with you. Just, I believe that um, it's not only in veganism, but with every diet, it's, it's quite important to have a basic understanding of nutrition. I, I don't have kids myself, but I do believe that every child should study this at school. Just one semester, I'm not talking about many years, but basic, where you get your protein, calcium, iron from, uh, how to read the food labels. A lot of us just grab a, a, any product from supermarket and we don't know how to understand those labels in the back. And I believe that should be the part of, of the education of our kids. And if we miss that part uh, as a kid, we should educate ourselves as a grown-ups. All right, Anya, so we're going to continue conversation. Uh, let's start cooking. And what do you have for us today? So I will first introduce the pet dish and that will be a vegan chocolate mousse with quite unusual ingredients. Here I have a tin of chickpeas, just a regular chickpeas. I especially kept them in a tin to show you there's no any treat behind it. It's really a chickpea. And this water, which you usually discard, is aquafaba. That's the name of the of this brine uh, from a chickpea thing. And it has a lot of Starches. So what I'm going to do, I would like to use only uh, only my water from chickpeas today. I will set the chickpeas aside. I'm going to use them after for hummus, uh, probably. That's very really interesting because I always throw away this water. Yes, I mean, and it's, it's really, really um, nutritious. Um, 
It looks uh, pretty unattractive, as you can see, but it's a bit magical. I will show you in a second. Here I have the one chocolate bar also melted. I'm using today just a regular lean dark chocolate. Uh, you don't have to look for the certified vegan chocolate. Majority of the chocolate, uh, uh, dark chocolates are vegan with the one exception. Well, I hope I can mention it. Cadbury's chocolate, dark chocolate are not vegan, for example. They still use the milk powder. But like linked, every, every dark um, linked chocolate is vegan. So that's what I'm going to use. Just a pinch of salt. And today, as my sweetener, I'm using maple syrup. So these four ingredients is the base of our chocolate mousse. So let's start. My chickpeas thing, and that's important, I kept it in the fridge for the past few hours. It's very important that it will be cold, especially in Singapore. Room temperature will not work. We're going to whisk it in a similar manner as you whisk uh, white eggs. So here I have a whisker, a uh, blender. And again, it's cold. I also kept it in a fridge. It really makes a big difference uh, when it's cold. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to whisk it similar way as you would with your white eggs. Sorry, white part of eggs. With a pinch of salt. You know, Anya, this is exactly what we do when we make hummus. We, we we keep the chickpeas cold, we keep the machine cold. Um, yes. I, think, yes. I think it really makes a big difference in the texture. So what I'm going to do, I need to whisk it for about seven, eight minutes. I will whisk it in front of camera for about uh, first one minute. And then my assistant here will go to the other room and whisk it further because it will be a bit boring for you to just look when for seven minutes I whisk my aquafaba. I just want to show you the first one minute how much has changed. And so I've heard that this thing whips up like meringue. Sorry, I cannot hear you for a minute. Um, I, I, I won't be able to take any questions. I cannot hear it. It's really noisy from my side. So this is aquafaba that uh, Anya is whisking right now and uh, it whips up just like meringue and this is going to be, uh, this is what she's going to use instead of uh, cream. Cream, uh, double whipped cream is what we usually uh, use when we make a chocolate mousse uh, but uh, uh, the vegans like to use aquafaba instead of cream to get that same uh, moussey texture that volume that you want in your, uh, in your job. Can everyone else hear me? Everyone else hear me? Yes, we okay. can hear you deeply. So I will show you, before I pass it to my assistant, how much it changed. I will come closer to the camera. So can you see this was just a few minutes and it already gets uh, foamy like, a, like an egg. I hope it's visible for you. Yes. So we need to whisk it for another, I would say, seven minutes. I will pass it to my assistant. He will go to another room when he doesn't make such, so much noise. And he's going to whisk it further. So obviously I'm lucky enough that for me it takes longer. I know it might sound a bit boring uh, for seven, eight minutes just to, just to whisk it, but uh, if it's too runny, our chocolate mousse will not set. So that's really crucial to, to get it uh, firm, just like you, you will get with your eggs. So it's a similar procedure. So I'm going to... I uh, put aside our uh, chocolate mousse and I will move to strawberry jam. And jams usually are uh, not really a healthy product. They are packed with sugar, uh, gelatin in a, in a traditional version or some sort of stabilizer if it's artificial. But you can actually prepare homemade, very, very healthy fruit jam. Today I'm going to use strawberry 
any berries will work, uh, raspberries, um, uh, blackberries. It works with mango. I try once with pineapple, it didn't work. So basically any soft, mushy fruit, um, they will be the most suitable uh, for that uh, homemade jam. Then is my magic ingredient. I'm using a chia seed. Um, chia seeds is a very interesting product if you ever consider a good fully time plant based. It makes wonders in baking when, when the, it works as the egg replacement. So basically what I'm doing, I'm mixing just a tablespoon of chia seeds with a uh, one and a half, two tablespoons of water, and it works in, uh, in baking, in, in muffins, uh, or, or in a cake. Uh, the disadvantage is that obviously because these are seeds, you will always feel the, the, the little uh, pieces of, of chia seeds in your mouth. I'm okay with that. And also from the nutritional perspective, chia seeds are absolutely amazing because they contain omega-3 acids. And not many vegan, purely vegan products uh, contain omega-3, so this is a great one. And uh, it makes wonders when you mix it with something wet, even with regular water. I will use a bit of the lemon juice. And again, as a sweetener, I'm going to use maple syrup. So what I'm going to do with my strawberry, I'm going to heat them up. I don't want to cook them. Uh, but I do want them to uh, um, crush a bit. So it's a dry pot, no water, no oil, just a dry pot. So my, um, my assistant came to show you how much uh, aquafaba has changed. It was just a few minutes. Can you see it? Is it visible, Nita? Yes. So you can see that it's already very, very close to, to completely being waste. I would say another two, three minutes. And it's absolutely amazing because you can use that mixture, you can actually bake the rum out of that uh, in a similar manner as you will bake uh, egg meringues. And it works also uh, if you want to make a light cakes uh, as a replacement of egg. And it's so cheap because we always uh, discount the water, nobody ever uses water for anything else. So I'm going basically with the back of my spoon just to crush the strawberries and I like my jar to have a little pieces of fruit inside. If you don't like those uh, little pieces of fruit, you can just quickly bend it after process them in the pan. In the pot, in the pan. So Anya, you're using uh, maple syrup instead of sugar for all your recipes. Is there a reason for that? Uh, yes, it has a lower glycemic index, and I found it because maple syrup is so much deeper in flavor, and you actually end up using less. But sugar, uh, to get the right flavor, I would say you have to add it more. Maple syrup with a deepness of this kind of, let's call it the caramelish uh, flavor, you actually end up using less of that. And is it true that, uh, you know, I've heard uh, about vegan sugar. I've heard that sometimes sugar, when they process it, you know, they, they crush bones and put inside it and stuff like that. So you really have to look out for vegan sugar. Yes, uh, yes, that's true. And if you want to um, uh, you know, follow the plant-based diet to, to the letter, you do have to find out uh, how your sugar be manufactured. Some of the manufacturers might be transparent, some of them might be not. So for all you vegans out there, be careful when you buy your sugar, you want to make sure it's vegan. Yes, unfortunately it's true with a lot of, a lot of products, the same as with uh, wine, or the wine uh, in field is just a grape juice. Uh, red wine is filtered with milk. The commercially made red wine and the white wine with the fish essence, so it's not even vegetarian. Uh, again, some of the manufacturers will uh, 
uh, will be transparent about it, some of them will not. We would need to read the food label very closely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> If you find the brands which you know and you trust, that will be fine, but just stick to them if you trust them already. Perfect. Well, now Aqua is done. I'll show you how it looks. Can you see it? Yes. So it's already firm, very white, I mean, super fluffy. What I'm going to do, I have a melted chocolate, uh, just, uh, just a pure chocolate. Sorry, I'm going to the blend there in a second. So I have my chocolate and I'm going to mix it, uh, fold it with, um, with a spoon with aquafaba. So you don't want to do it with the blender, but gently sort of folding um, with, your, with your spoon. It's really fluffy, very, very light. I don't know whether you can actually see it. Yes, it looks like whipped cream. Yes. So I'm adding my chocolate. It's not hot, uh, it's warm, but I would suggest not to do it with the piping of chocolate. But anyway, if you melt chocolate, it should never be piping hot. I cheated today a bit. I did it in a microwave, but on a, on a very low heat. So not a regular speed of microwave. And now I'm folding it slowly. I can see already that it comes together. And it smells chocolate, very chocolatey. You know, uh, I, I now, I think I now know the secret behind that fluffy hummus that you get when you go to the Middle East. You know, a couple of places I saw it was so fluffy, so fluffy that I just, I, I just couldn't understand what is, you know, you cannot whip chickpeas and get that kind of fluffy, uh, fluffy texture, but I think that that's what they're doing. They're adding aqua. Yeah. It, it might be. As I say, it's a very cheap way uh, without any additional cost, which obviously uh, it's, it's very important. And it's not exotic ingredient, which you have to source from internet. Very true because you know I never used to know what to do with that chickpea water. I used to always just throw it away. And uh, so many people uh, tell us that you know whenever you open a can, the water discard the water that the the the, the beans are in because it's got preservatives and this and that. Uh, but now we know what to do with it. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is nothing what you should use on a daily basis because it still has a lot of salt. That chocolate is just a strong enough ingredient to overtake the salt. But we do need a little sweet salty in our, uh, in our chocolate mousse, right? Yes, I agree. And I have a very sweet tooth. I'm adding a bit of maple syrup. But if you like more of the dark chocolate flavors, you don't need any sweetener because it's sweet enough from chocolate. I have a very, very sweet tooth and I actually like uh, my desserts to be Super sweet. Uh, so I'm adding my maple syrup. And for this recipe, obviously, any sweetener in the liquid form. If you add uh, the caster sugar, uh, it's, it will be, you will still have the pieces of sugar. So that's basically it. And uh, that was the quick part. What I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to I uh, put them in a small bowl, and I'm doing very small bowls because the, the smaller the dishes, it's easier to set. And I'm going to put it in a fridge. Normally, I leave them overnight. Uh, today we don't have so much time. 
that I will, uh, they won't be as set as normally, but they already will change the texture. I hope you can see that it's pretty. It looks luscious. Is it? And it smells amazing, absolutely amazing. So that's the most time consuming part of preparation of the dessert is just setting in the fridge. Uh, the best if you do it overnight. This looks lovely. Yes, and then obviously um, you can play with different chocolates. You can, uh, it works the same with a white chocolate if, if you are into, into white chocolate. So, uh, yeah. Anya, how about uh, juice from, uh, from the can of uh, cannellini beans or kidney beans? C can that be whipped up into... No, I tried with another one and there are a lot of uh, uh, forums online when people try it. It doesn't work the same way. And I'm guessing it has to be due to the, due to the protein content of chickpeas. I will pass it to my sous chef, so he will put it in a fridge. Uh, it doesn't work, and unfortunately, it, it also doesn't work very well if you will just use the water uh, which you cook your chickpeas at home, because it has to be the right thickness. Um, and especially in the beginning, I would recommend not to experiment, because you can waste a lot of chocolate. If, if your aquafaba, if your water chickpeas won't be thick enough, you won't whisk it properly and it will never set. So especially in the beginning, uh, I would go for the regular chickpea steam from, from the shop. The homemade one, maybe leave it when you're already feeling very, very confident uh, about it because uh, it's, uh, it's not so easy to get it right. Right. <clears throat> So I will clean my station and prepare everything for our strawberry jam. So just leave me a second. And if you have any questions, obviously regardless, regarding the dish, but also if you have any questions regarding a plant-based diet, then I am happy to answer. I think there is a question, Anna, from Golden Garch. Yes? What if you don't want to use tinned chickpeas and want to make it from scratch. Now this is what I said. Don't don't play with that in the beginning, uh, because I know from different forms and how I try it. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes don't. Chickpeas, uh, tin chickpeas is just the safest way because it's always the same. Any other questions? Okay, so I'll move to our strawberry jam. So we have the strawberry jam. I have our strawberries, which as you can see are still in a big chunky pieces. So sorry, they're still in a in the whole pieces. I'm going to quickly pose them, not, I, I don't blend them into a smooth puree, that's not what I want to do, but I do want a, a lot of small pieces of strawberries, so I just quickly going to pose them. So you're keeping a coarse texture for your uh, jam, is it? Yes, yes. So here I have my strawberries. But this is completely optional. I mean, if I want a really smooth jam. Uh, yes, yes. Here I have a two and a half tablespoon of chia seeds. Here I have about a tablespoon of uh, lemon juice. 
And I will add just a teaspoon of sweetener, and that's again very optional. If you are happy with the natural sweetness of uh, strawberries, completely fine to omit it. I will use just a teaspoon, so not much. So we can also do a, a mixed berry jam. You know, I could add blueberries, uh, blackberries, and just do a mix. Yes, as long as it's a, it's a soft fruit. Soft. Uh, it will not work with apple, obviously, but uh, any berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and I try with mango. It also works with mango. So a fruit that has a lot of moisture because the chia seeds will need to, to soak it up, right? Yes, yes. They basically have to uh, set up uh, uh, your uh, fruits, um, your, your fruit mash because this is more like a mash. That's perfectly fine. I will now, again, you set it up and you set it in a fridge. Just a tablespoon of maple syrup, that, that's really, really amazing because you know when we, when we chefs make jams, uh, we first throw in a whole lot of sugar in the saucepan before we do anything else. It's this just thing, that was a teaspoon. That was a small teaspoon. That wasn't even a tablespoon. Not even a tablespoon. Wow. That was, uh, I mean, I am, as I say, to me, the health aspect of cooking is very, very important. And people have to sometimes understand that um, throwing extra sugar everywhere, or even if you're on vegan diet, and I can see that a lot of chefs pouring olive oil straight from the bottle. Unfortunately, uh, it's great in a restaurant once in a while, if you see it as an occasional treat, but I don't believe that should be the way we cook on a daily basis. Um, yeah. I understand it's different in a, if you're in a restaurant. You know, we're, we, I love jam, but I always stay away from jam because of the amount of sugar that goes into it. But this is such an amazing recipe and this really, uh, I'm, I'm definitely making that. Yes, and it's really easy. Obviously, the, the thing is the advantage of that dish is you can keep it only up to four days in the fridge. You cannot keep it for weeks and you would keep a store bought jam because we didn't use any preservatives here. But I think I, I like to make a small batches of that. Uh, like today I used 200 grams of strawberries only. And uh, I don't have to worry uh, that, this, that I have to keep it longer than four days because I'm sure it will disappear much faster. I think that's good because you know, you, you make fresh and you eat fresh. You don't have to yes. really- Yes. And my assistant will put it to the fridge. It's good that I have my assistant. <laughs> Brian would like to know if so we could use banana in this recipe. Uh, yes, you can use banana. Just add a bit of water when you, because bananas you do have to blend them. Uh, they will need a bit of water. So chia seeds, they will have actually liquids to absorb because otherwise banana will be too dry. But yes, you can try it. I use it. I do sometimes a raw dessert and I use banana, uh, smashed banana with a bit of water instead of custard. So it's a purely raw dish when I do uh, like a base for the tartlet uh, with uh, dates and nuts. And I fill it with a banana which is uh, blended with water and a bit of chia seed. So it sets together just like custard would. All right, so what are we making next? So that's our last dish. Um, and again, very simple and very healthy. Chickpea flour, Benson, I am sure I don't have to introduce it to you. Uh, uh, I know that it's, uh, it's very popular here in Singapore. Um, pity that it's not popular worldwide because again, I find it's a magic ingredient in a uh, vegan baking, it does replace eggs, it not only replaces eggs, I'm making vegan omelette purely based on the uh, chickpea flour, so to me it, it's a staple in my kitchen and it's very healthy. I know in English um, the translation is a chickpea flour, but it actually does not contain any flour, it's basically pure chickpeas, 
So it's a very a high protein product and all natural without any uh, artificial additive, uh, preservatives. I here have 130 grams of chicken flour. I have about three small bananas like that. And it's important that bananas uh, for the pancake, they have to be very, very soft. So you can see that this one is already pretty, pretty black. And actually, especially, I kept them for last few days for our recipe today because I want them to be very, very ripe. So quite uh, with a lot of dark spots. I have about 120 milliliters of uh, soya milk, but any plant-based milk will do except coconut milk. Coconut milk is based to, to thick. So almond milk, cashew milk, cashew nut milk, walnut milk, whatever you find uh, will be okay. I'm using a uh, gluten-free baking powder because uh, all my dishes are gluten-free. Uh, but if you don't follow gluten-free diet, go ahead and use just a regular baking powder. It does not have any impact on the dish. And here I'm using um, vanilla sugar. Again, it's optional. If you are okay with a natural sweetness of banana, uh, you don't have to add it. I, I like a bit of the sweetness and obviously a bit of the vanilla. So really simple. Uh, I will basically blend everything together. My chickpea flour, my free baked bananas, 130 milliliter of uh, soy milk, Just half teaspoon of uh, baking powder. And I will add just a, a teaspoon of uh, vanilla sugar. Anya, there are so many myths around a vegan diet and I was hoping that you know you can help us bust some of them. Uh, one of them being that uh, it's not suitable for children. Uh, no, that's um, if you if you especially uh, look up the internet, it was in beginning of 2019 when the World Health Organization uh, officially recommended the vegan diet in all stages of, of our life, so including uh, babies, kids, pregnant uh, women and the elderly, so it's suitable to, for all stages of our life. But like any, any diet, it should be well balanced. And this is where I think the problem starts. If you eat only, I don't want to name the brand, but if you eat uh, plant-based burgers, uh, which are so popular, especially in Singapore, if you will eat only uh, plant-based cheeses and all this little the convenient uh, food, uh, chocolate bars, oat bars, yes, it's not suitable. It contains tons of sugar and fat. But uh, vegan diet is suitable to, for kids. It does contain iron, protein, and calcium, all the nutrients which kids need. Uh, it just has to be planned in advance, but I hope at least that parents also plan the a diet for the kids, uh, also when they're on a meat diet, a vegetarian diet, that their parents put some thoughts what actually kids have on the plate. So I think it's the same philosophy which can be uh, implemented for the vegan food. I'm going quickly to blend it. The blender is very noisy. So I, I will basically go quiet. Thank <laughs> you. 
it doesn't take long to prepare uh, the cooking part because when there is a fruit or vegetables, you don't cook them as long as meat. Obviously, the preparation of peeling, chopping, that takes some time, and that's why I, I pre, uh, pre prepared some things uh, before. But you can roast the meat for four or five hours in the oven. You don't roast vegetables for four or five hours because basically you kill them. So it is faster, and there is this misconception as you mentioned about the vegan diet that it's time consuming to prepare. I find it actually faster to prepare vegan dishes um, because vegetables and fruit, they don't need as much uh, process as, as meat does or as dairy does. And Anya, is it, is it true that vegans need more supplements or should take more supplements um, than, than any other people who take other diets? Yes, it actually it is true. And I will explain why. The supplement that you have in mind is a B12. And B12 is a funny vitamin because actually it's present only in the soil. So when chicken or cow or a pig, they, they will, for example, eating something from grass or from, from the ground, they will consume it with the soil. So that's the why their meat, the cow's meat or chicken meat, they contain B12. But it's not because cow is producing it or chicken is producing it. It's because they consume it. So this chicken, it's like a middleman for us. This chicken consume it from the ground, from the, from the soil, and then we consume chicken. And in that sense, uh, vegans have to supplement B12. Uh, however, meat eaters supplemented by eating the chicken because again, it's a middleman. The animals are not able to produce B12, just like we are not able to produce B12. Hundred years back, what happened when people were living in a um, bit less sterile uh, condition, they were consuming vegetables with a trace of soy. And then they had their B12. Today, it's uh, almost impossible to, to do that. Even if you have your own farm, it, it, uh, we are raised in a different times. So we, we washed everything, we removed all the soil, all the dirt from our vegetables. Hence, we need a B12. So in that sense, yes. And then there's another supplement, which is vitamin D. But uh, in Singapore, we, we don't need it as much. Uh, but in the Northern European countries, Germany, Scandinavia, Everybody, meat eaters and vegans, they need uh, vitamin D. All right, so do buy a bottle of B12 vitamin. Uh, yes. When shopping. B12 is needed, but again, animals are just a middleman for us. All right, what are we doing next with the pancake? So we have a butter, as you can see, it's pretty thick. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it is visible. No, I come closer. So it's a really thick uh, pancake butter. Right. And what I'm going to do, here I have just a dry pan, no oil, no water, all dry. And I'm going to fry them without, uh, without oil. I tested many times, so I do know that it's working. Um, you don't, you don't need to use uh, oil for that uh, recipe. I will heat up my pan. Is it because of the ingredients in your recipe, or is it just because you're using an awesome nonstick pan? And uh, it's good on the both, but the pan, uh, there is a lot of bananas in proportion to flour, so it actually doesn't burn. All right. There's still uh, bananas which have uh, relatively a lot of uh, water, moist. It's very nice because so many of us, you know, we want to eat no oil food. And I absolutely agree with that. I believe that uh, we're supposed to use oil only um, as a dress, salad dressing or bit on the top. Using oil for frying, I, I don't do that. I fry my onion or garlic in water, for example. I try to reduce the usage of oil as much as I can. A 
as I don't believe it has been for us. But I just wait until my clients on the call. Backrooms. How hot should the frying pan be for this one? A medium or high? What, what are we looking for? Medium. Medium. I don't want to high because I don't want to burn it. Okay. So what I'm doing, I prefer an acrylic small pan plate. So I will use for one pan and two spoons uh, this time. So what I'm doing, I will I'll show you when I put it on a frying pan. So just two spoons per pound cake, and I flatten it with the back of the spoon. Okay. So basically, Something like that is visible. Oh my God, this is looking so good. And it's really healthy. So now, about two, three minutes, I don't touch it. And it smells really banana. I think a lot of people like it because it's uh, naturally sweet. The cheesy flower uh, flavor so it sort of disappears. Especially if you just use one teaspoon of any sweetener, that's absolutely enough for the butter. So Anya, uh, tell us something. Is it, you know, is it expensive to be a vegan? I mean, is it expensive to be a meat eater? You can buy lobster on a meat eater uh, when you are a meat eater and you can buy uh, cheap chicken. The same is with the vegan. I can buy expensive artisan vegan cheese, which costs a fortune, but I can buy a cheap tofu. Cheap tofu, that's right. So it, 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 it depends on how gourmet you want to it's go. It's as, as you want to make it. Yes, you can, you can find a lot of expensive products, but you can find a lot of cheap products. Uh, beans, legumes, tofu, tempeh. This doesn't cost much. And tell us some uh, high energy vegan foods because you know we a lot of meat eaters who, who turn vegan they feel that they're not getting enough protein and you know they, they, they need more energy uh, they need to build more muscle so what do they do for that? So exactly the pancake which we're making now is pretty high in protein because uh, of the chicken flour uh, so anything with falafel and hummus the classic combination, and it's a high protein dish. Um, anything with the legumes inside, uh, it will be a high protein. Tofu and tempeh, absolutely amazing. And I do know that some people are not happy about the flavor of, uh, of especially tofu, but you can turn it into advantage. Tofu is pretty black, which means that you can make anything out of that. You can, uh, you can make it, uh, use it in a dessert, mix it with, with chocolate and have a, with heavy chocolate mousse. You can marinate it in your favorite Indian, Chinese, or Italian spices, and you have a tofu a la Indian, Chinese, or Italian. So it's a very versatile product, high protein, uh, and very, in, I would say, uh, healthier than meat. Because without any cholesterol, without any extra fat. So do we have any vegetarian or vegetarian or vegan here? I think quite a few. <laughs> um, I think uh, one of them wants to know the importance uh, of being vegan and another wants uh, is worried about the calcium intake of a vegan diet. So the calcium, um, there are a lot of campaigns all around the world that you can see the calcium on the top models with a glass of milk. Uh, this milk, soy milk, which I just got today, actually is fortified with, uh, with uh, calcium. 
uh, the same with any fortified plant-based milk, which means what the producer tried to do, uh, average Brussels cow's milk, we will have about 120 uh, milligrams of calcium. They fortify uh, those products similar way. So if your glass of uh, soya milk or glass of the uh, cashew nut milk or almond milk will also have the same amount of calcium. But that's fortification. Kale, broccoli, pork choy, they will have a very high content of uh, calcium as well. well and there's, another question. Question. there's another there's another myth that surrounds vegan diet uh, that you know you don't feel full enough and you're always hungry. Is that true? That you don't see enough. Don't get full. Uh, you don't get full uh, when you are used to, let's say chicken and rice, we are in Singapore. If you are used to a small uh, portion of rice and let's say 200 grams of chicken, and if you replace this 200 grams of chicken with 200 grams of top four vegetables, yes, you will be hungry. And a lot of vegans in the beginning of their vegan journey, they they have this misconception of their play of the volume. And the volume wise, sometimes you just have to eat more than you will eat on the meat diet because the products have a less calories, um, a less fat. So you do actually need physically more, volume wise more, to eat than what you were eating as a, as a meat eater. 200 grams of chicken does not equal 200 grams of coffee. So I would say people tend to eat uh, not enough. And that's why they are hungry. And the second of all, not enough proteins. So if you eat a lot of carbs, the carbs are good. And the, uh, that's what the vegans believe that the carbs are good. Uh, but you don't have enough proteins. If you don't include all these beans, legumes, coffee, tempe, you will be hungry. Hence, for example, pasta with uh, tomato sauce and vegetables will not keep you full for long. Even if, if it seems like a lot because of the carbs, it needs some protein to, to keep you full for longer. So you need to replace wisely. Yes. So if, you're, if you're turning vegan, you, you need to replace your, your portion size and your, your nutrition intake. Yes. Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, but again, everybody should study a bit of nutrition for for their own benefit, even if they are meat eaters. Right. My first two pancakes are ready. I'm going to show you them from... Can you see them? Yes, we can see them. So they are relatively soft. Uh, uh, smell very banana-like. Uh, and very quickly to prepare it, you can see it didn't stick to the pan. Uh, it really works very well without any oil. Here I have uh, two more. So you just uh, bear with me for a minute or two. This is so interesting. So. Um, is it true that uh, chickpeas are a vegan's best friend? Chickpeas and coconut milk. They, they, vegans, all vegans love coconut milk, right? Yes, but with the coconut milk, I'll be very careful because coconut and palm, uh, these are two products which contain saturated fat. So they were wonders in the dessert, but uh, not so much uh, maybe on a daily basis. But chickpeas, yes. Chickpeas are the first time. I recently baked um, uh, brownies, like a blondie white, uh, you know, white blondie brownies with a white chocolate and chickpeas, uh, and they were fragrant in the service one. Uh, so, yes, you can do everything from chickpeas, uh, low fat, a lot of fiber, uh, a lot of protein. Yes, I would call them best friends. All right, so someone in the audience, I think they want to know why is vegan diet better? Am I right? 
Milita, is that the question? Why is a vegan? Why is it better to follow vegan diet? Because they are very. Um, I leave out the moral aspects, uh, sustainability aspect, although they are proven um, research which shows that. Uh, sorry. Um, which shows that uh, it's better for our planet because the, you need the far less water to, to grow the plants than to first grow this plant and feed animals to them. But I leave it aside, that wasn't my why. I also leave it aside, there are some moral reasons that a lot of people decide not to harm animals. Uh, I believe in, uh, in the health aspect of that. So with the vegan diet, it's proven that the vegan diet significantly reduces your risk of cancer, cardiovascular diseases, obviously it lowers your uh, cholesterol level, and, and I believe it increases your uh, life energy. That's, uh, that's what I experience. Uh, I don't see any side effects, basically. And uh, the standard Western diet, which is um, now not only Western, it's, it's uh, everywhere in China, uh, sorry, everywhere in Asia, including China. Uh, unfortunately, it's linked to a lot of, um, to a lot of diseases. And um, I think food can fix it. Food, can, food should be, it can be our best medicine. That's right, Anya. You know, there's a very uh, old saying that we are what we eat. And yes. uh, there's no doubt about the fact, I have never heard from anybody uh, who's, who's had a, a bowl of salad for uh, dinner saying that, oh, you know, I'm feeling so heavy. I mean, we all feel lighter when, when we are eating cleaner. If I can recommend for people who are interested, whoever asked this question about um, why vegan diet is better, and I only this one argument about nutrition. I think it's a, I call it vegan Bible. It's the China study by Professor Campbell. Very interesting um, book, which shows the result of seven or eight years of studies uh, which were conducted in China in the uh, 70s, when for seven years, first time ever during the Cold War, American scientists were allowed to China and they did the interesting research in the rural area of China, far away from Beijing, far away from Shanghai, uh, where people were eating meat, mostly just for Chinese New Year, so they were almost vegan because they really didn't exist over there. Then vegetarian diet equal to, to vegan diet. And then he found out there is no cancer, no cardiovascular diseases. They suffer from diseases which people in the West didn't suffer because they were deficient uh, Basically, they, they didn't eat enough. They didn't meet their uh, calorie uh, needs. They basically were living in poverty. Uh, but it does show me that all those modern diseases which we have, uh, especially heart, uh, cancer, which are top two probably, they can be even cured. That's maybe too far to say, but at least some of them, they can be dramatically reduced with uh, with a vegan diet, so I would always uh, encourage everyone to, to read that book. It's purely scientific, it's, uh, written by, by a doctor, medical doctor. Uh, and he doesn't present his personal opinion, he's just presenting uh, results of his research. China study. Our topics are ready. I can ask for my strawberry jam and a chocolate mousse. So did we, uh, did we add any sweetener to this uh, pancake? I, I may have missed it. Yes, a bit of uh, vanilla sugar. Yeah. But you can completely omit it. It's not, it's not mandatory. Okay, this is my jam. Can you see it? I'll go closer, I'll go closer a bit easier. Nice and thick. So it, it took about, let's say, half an hour for it to become this thick? Yes, yes, uh, 
And do you recommend keeping this overnight? Because um, a lot of people say that chia, chia seeds should be soaked overnight to get the best results out of it. Uh, yes, it's much better. The, uh, I smashed my strawberries for smaller pieces just uh, because I knew I have so little time. Uh, if you have a big pieces of strawberries, they will not set within half an hour. Then the, the, the whole mixture needs more time. I today was a bit in a hurry, so uh, that's why I said overnight, absolutely, I would say uh, the best way to do it. So you can serve your pancake with a bit of jam. And I believe uh, that would be the dish which keeps first. Uh, but enjoy to, to prepare it because it's so easy and they can learn so many new ingredients and I hope they will enjoy to, to eat it. This one is going look. This is looking so lovely and uh, less than a tablespoon of sugar on this plate. Am I right? Yes, yes. And the chocolate mousse. It did say completely. So I show you now the texture. It's very airy. It's exactly what I was aiming for. Oh, yes. Again, is it visible? Yes, it is. So it's absolutely how the regular eggy chocolate mousse will, uh, will look and uh, without any, any eggs uh, whatsoever. And I hope it was very simple to, to prepare it. That's really amazing. That, really, that, that looks exactly like what we make with cream. Yes, yes, I, I agree. And it's much, much lighter. Much, much lighter, I agree. So, do you have any questions? Questions, yeah. Yes, I think uh, the questions are more based on the vitamin deficiency in vegan somehow. Uh, there's less belief in uh, the protein content and uh, the iron deficiency. Somehow we have to clear that <laughs> in this session. Okay. okay, so let's start with protein because that's, uh, that's the biggest misconception. We need adult human beings, not only vegans, we need uh, between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 gram protein per day, which is actually very little. And majority of people in the Western world, they actually exceed the uh, protein intake. And everything has protein. Strawberries have protein in life. And obviously the strawberries, tomatoes, cucumber, they will have very little. Uh, content uh, very little protein. High level of protein like uh, chickpea food, chickpeas, beans generally, mm -hmm. tofu, tempeh, they contain a lot of protein. There is a misconception that the vegan proteins are not completed because they don't contain nine essential amino acids. The regular meat protein is a chain of nine amino acids. And it's true, the majority of the plant-based don't contain it. However, there are two exceptions. I'll mention them in a second. But what happened with the plant-based uh, protein, it's like, if you have $100, you can have this $100 in a $100 load. But if you have $150 and $220 and $110, this is still $100. Am I right? So what happened with the plant-based protein, uh, since all of them contain nine different amino acids, you can actually build them to create your full, product, full chain, just like you build your full hundred dollars amount. And if you eat uh, the food from different groups, bit of legumes, bit of uh, chickpeas, a bit of uh, red kidney beans, bit of tofu, a bit of tempeh, then you will get your full chain of amino acids without any problem. And it's not as clinical, our body is a bit smart, it's not as clinical that you don't have to have all these products in, on one plate. If you combine them within, let's say, 48 hours during two days, say for, for breakfast you will have a bit of tofu, for lunch you have a bit of uh, beans, and for dinner you might have a bit of chickpeas, that's okay, you are all covered. They are two uh, stars in a plant-based world which contain the same nine amino acids, full chain as meat, and this is quinoa and soy. 
Like people are so afraid, and I don't think they should to to be afraid that they won't get the, the nine uh, amino acids. They can still try to include soy and uh, quinoa in the in the menu, and they are well covered with a protein. Iron deficiency. Uh, if you if you look at the the world statistics, ULF, which is obviously uh, one of the top meat uh, consumers in the world, they have a high percentage of people which have anemia because it's not necessarily uh, connected to the meat consumption. You can, your body might just have a problem with absorption of iron uh, or you might have uh, certain diseases which also uh, impact your iron absorption. So what vegans uh, should do, uh, they should focus how to absorb the iron which is already in the food. And there is iron in the uh, in nuts, in seeds, uh, in some vegetables like uh, like broccoli. And what we're supposed to focus on is how to increase the absorption. And there are three or four tricks. First trick always include vitamin C, which can increase absorption even uh, 50 or 60 percent. So sprinkle a bit of parsley, a uh, bit of lemon juice. Or if you have your morning oats, because oats are a great source of iron, have it with a strawberry, the, with the raspberries, with anything will have a lot of vitamin C. Second, never ever mix iron, uh, high iron uh, product with a high content of iron with tea or coffee. If you have a steak, the pure steak, and you have a strong black tea straight after the steak, your iron will be absorbed. Tea, the little uh, molecules, tannins in the tea, seriously impacted our iron absorption. So uh, again, tea or coffee is great, but half an hour to 45 minutes after the meal, never served with, with the meal. But it's the same for the meat eaters. It's, it's nothing specific for, for vegan iron. Um, the same uh, with the iron fermented products increase the absorption. So tawel kraut, kimchi, miso paste, kombucha, uh, vegan yogurts, the probiotics, which are in the vegan yogurts, they increase the absorption of iron. So it's quite easy to mix uh, iron uh, meat. And then calcium, I think Milita, that's what you mentioned is the last one. As I mentioned before, fortified products. Any vegan milk, uh, I don't want to sound wrong. You have to read it. Unfortunately, uh, because in Asia, uh, people drank soya milk not as a replacement of plant-based milk. A lot of Asian companies don't do that. But if you look into Australian, British, when they are manufactured for vegans, so they basically have to replace your cow's milk, they usually are um, enriched in the same level that the glass of plant-based milk contains the same calcium as a glass of cow's, uh, as cow's milk. And a lot of green vegetables co contain uh, calcium and tofu contains a lot of calcium. Does it answer my question? Does it answer your question? I think, yes, I think you know nature has given us pretty much everything that we need to, to to be healthy and to have a nutritious diet uh, without killing other you, other other living beings. I see quite an interesting comment from someone from RT that has been vegan for the past 20 years and did vegetarian before, had a need to see a doctor before, but nowadays people are taking so many antibiotics and chemicals from the animal meat, they're always falling sick. And that unfortunately is true. Uh, if you start to read what happened in the meat industry all around the world really uh, what sort of nasty antibiotics are um, the animals are fed and people do consume it i actually was a bit surprised i found out just a few months ago that uh, human beings we we are not uh, all antibiotics are mostly produced for animals the people are sort of second so the animals are first receivers of all antibiotics which are produced worldwide and it does have a serious effect, especially if you eat for women or for fertility. Uh, apparently, 100 years ago, uh, women didn't have so many problems to, to get pregnant. 
and it has to be a link between the current hormone uh, intake and, and so many women having problems with, with uh, getting pregnant, with the fertility. That's all because of our, our, our lifestyle now and the eating habits. Yes, yes, uh, everything can be changed. I was cheese addict, I used to love cheese. I was vegetarian as I mentioned 20 years, for 20 years before I turned vegan, but cheese was my big addiction. I love cheese and it didn't happen overnight when I quit all cheese, but now when I see it, it's not tempting anymore. It was just a process and I will encourage everyone to try slowly just for yourself, introduce maybe one, one day a week to being vegan, or if it's too much, maybe just one meal a week, maybe every breakfast only, or maybe every Monday breakfast to be vegan. Uh, because I don't think the revolution really uh, um, works great, and I don't think such a big change in our life should happen overnight. Right. All right, so um, any other questions from the uh, audience? I can see, I still can give up cheese and honey, how do you do it? So if I can recommend something, I, I Valerie, if you're living in Singapore, uh, I would tell you the, the brand maybe which I like. I try vegan cheeses. There is a bio cheese, which is available in cold storage. It's Australian made vegan cheese. Um, and you can use it for pizza, lasagna, any dish when cheese has to be melted, it melts beautifully. Just remember, it's like an other cheese. It shouldn't be part of your daily diet because it contains quite a lot of fat. Um, it's not a health product, but it does help tremendously with the transition. Um, so there's a bio cheese, there is a Singapore made cheese. Um, it's the lady which produced cheeses in Singapore, Crudy. Um, I know that this week she just launched it on Fair Price, but she also has her own website, Crudy on the dot com. I will write the name of the cheese, Crudy. Uh, she makes amazing artisan uh, cashew nut based cheeses, more like a soft one. So this are not hard one, it will not melt. But those little, those uh, products helps you with the transition, helps you to quit cheese. And my absolutely magic um, ingredient in my kitchen, nutritional yeast. I'm not sure uh, whether you, I will just type it, maybe it will be easier. And nutritional yeast, it's a form of uh, deactivated yeast, so they don't cause your product to, to your food to, to rise, but they have this umami, cheesy aftertaste, and you can make your uh, mac and cheese, uh, you can make your homemade cheese, um, uh, you can use it for cheesy salad dressings, it works wonder. And Mustafa has a cheaper vegan cheese, yes it does, but it's a very, um, I would say, it's a cheese, that's in the, the brand of that cheese. Um, I think it's a matter of personal preferences, it has a very strong flavor. Uh, Australian bio cheese, which is in cold storage, it's, uh, it's very mild, it doesn't have a strong flavor. All right, Anya, this is all so lovely. And everyone, if you want to uh, learn more vegan dishes, you can visit Anya's website, livingveggiebyanya.com. Uh, she conducts cooking classes and uh, she also has an ebook, uh, which is a compilation of 21 classic recipes from around the world, but with vegan takes on it. And um, also at the same time, don't forget to uh, look out for the next episode of Cook Love Eat 2.0, where we also show you how to prepare delicious, healthy recipes. Whether you cook vegan or non-vegan, always remember to cook with love. Because when food is cooked with love, served with love and eaten with love, it not only nourishes your body, but also your soul. On that note, I think, yes. On that note, if, if there are any other last questions we can take. All right, so shall we say bye-bye? Thank you so much, Anya. Thank you, Deepthi. Thank you, Milita, for put, putting this together for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so really much. Really enjoyed and...
for the little bit of cooking that I do, I really feel this this is something I can easily pick up and take it on. Thank you, Anya. I'll keep following you on your social media now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yaar. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram on the Living Veggie by Anya. Certainly, certainly. Bye. Thank you, Diti. Thank bye bye. You, bye. -bye. Yes, I do. Whoa. What do you think? Good job. I'm sorry. But very, very good show. Okay, I'm happy that. Uh, uh, oh, pretty. Okay, hello, hello. So, do you think people enjoyed it? I think so. I I I enjoyed it very much, and I think it was very good, very well, very very well put together. And uh, you finished well in time and that's really, uh, that really, and you answered everyone's questions. So that's, that, that's the best thing. That's, that's what matters the most to be able to finish everything in time. In Good, uh, yeah, I, I was looking uh, at the time to making sure that everything will finish within 60 minutes. Lovely. Fantastic. And lovely, Thank you. lovely knowing you and uh, hope, hope to, to stay in real life one day, not only if you're Zoom. Definitely, definitely. Bye.